What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. Thanks for joining us here today. It's excellent to have you here. And today we're going to be recapping this guy. For anybody who's been paying attention for any length of time, will recognize this as the gun that we've been using as our machine gun for the last year. This is a Ballistic Advantage build. And for anybody not in the know, VSO holds a 0702 FFL, which is a manufacturer's license with a special occupation tax stamp that allows us to convert guns to machine guns as necessary for R&D and other testing purposes. So the purpose of this build was expressly to melt silencers, and that's exactly what we did with it. Well, whenever possible, I like to stack testing, and so what we did is we contacted Ballistic Advantage, and we wanted to do a test on their barrels. So this is a QPQ coated 10.3 inch chrome molly vanadium, yeah, vanadium Hansen profile barrel. Big mouthful, I know. Ballistic Advantage is known for their quality barrels. I believe their reputation at this point in time is beyond reproach. I think the best way to test this thing would be to get super hot for super long and see how it does over the course of a year. Well, it has been a year, and over the course of the last year, we logged over 12,000 rounds through this barrel. And those are just the documented rounds. I'm sure that the round count is much higher uh, because you know how things happen when you have a gun like this on the range. Some of the rounds were probably not documented. You're not done yet? No. And that's what we're gonna be looking at here today is how that barrel did. But before we do that, I kind of wanted to go uh, butt to tip and just talk about some of the things that I noticed uh, through the gun over the course of last year. The buffer tube is attached with a ratcheting castle nut. The only thing I will say about this over a staked castle nut is this will back out a few clicks every once in a while. To fix it, real super easy, just go like that and torque it. I've torqued it with a wrench and it still backs off a little bit. Let's move on to the upper. About 3,000 rounds in, we swapped out the bolt to the Young Manufacturing HMB bolt. The carrier in this thing is nickel boron and the bolt itself is chrome. I've always been a fan of chrome bolts. I have some guns in this room that have chrome bolts. They have fallen by the wayside a little bit because of one of the things that we're gonna talk about. You can see there's a little bit of discoloration. This was a nickel boron carrier. It still is a nickel boron carrier, but you can see that there's been a filthy the, amount uh, of carbon party. on this thing over this the course of its life. I'll go back and see if I can find the original files. Uh, to show you guys what it looked like right out of the box, but this is just slightly discolored. There's really two things that we want to look for on the bolt carrier group. First, and the one that caused the most problem, is the staking on the gas key. The gas key looks just fine. There's nothing wrong with that thing. This is rock solid, has not moved at all through the entire breadth of the testing. As a note, we did not break any firing pins. This is the original firing pin. Now, although this bolt is immaculate for the number of rounds that have been through it, there are a few things that I do want to point out, and some of these you may not be able to see very well in this light. I'll be sure to get some close-ups. Right here at the front, you can see that there's a little bit of finish degradation on the main face of the bolt. And what that tells me is that that's the part where the bolt was contacting first and hardest, and it has peened it a little bit. So there's a little bit of finish degradation there. I tried to scuff it and, and, uh, and clean it up. I couldn't, I thought it was a smudge at first. It is uh, literally exposed metal. So that um, could be a point of concern long-term, but as you can see, this is 9,000 rounds and it still looks almost brand new. Now for this one, I'm almost certainly going to need a better lens to show you guys, but this dark spot right here, at first, I thought it was carbon or some kind of particulate that's adhered to it. No, this is actually another compromise in the finish here. So uh, that's, again, just something that we're pointing out. that It has got a spot or two that uh, after 9,000 rounds on this bolt uh, have degraded ever so slightly. So there's two places you want to check on your extractor here at the front where the claw actually is. And then the other place that we want to check is those wings right there. This looks fine. Ejector strength, the ejector feels good. Cam pin, and this is normal for this number of rounds. In fact, I've seen them break in this number of rounds before. So you've got a differential hardness, right like that, and it causes some scarring. And this is bad enough that I can, you guys can hear that, right? That I can catch a finger on it. 
So one of the reasons that companies went away from the chrome bolt over things like a nitrided or nickel boron bolt was one cost, but also those few dings and scratches that you saw on this thing that have turned into uh, compromises of the metal, essentially that f where that finish is perforated, we can start having issues with uh, structural integrity of things. Now this is by, and by no means bad whatsoever. This thing's gonna run for probably, crap man, probably 10 times what it's run. But that's where you start to see some of the issues versus like this nickel boron carrier, dirty. It got impregnated with carbon buildup. It looks dirty, but the finish itself is still intact. There's no rustiness coming through on the metal of the carrier. Well, wire there is a little bit coming through on places on the bolt itself. And nope. Looks to me like they need replaced. My favorite charging handle in the world, the Radian Raptor. Uh, we swapped this thing out, I think, around 3,000, either 3,000 or 6,000 rounds. I cannot remember. Uh, however, you can see there is a fair wear pattern on that thing. These sights are the excess sights. They held up quite well. There was no finish degradation or anything like that. They've been riding on the thing since I got it. They Before the, the Form 2 was done, I had these sights on here. But that's the caveat that I wanted to move into the rail. This rail is pretty awesome, especially how it uh, attaches. You guys know that I'm a big fan of the Midwest Industries brand. This is the only rail attachment system that I have seen that I like more than what they've got going on. The only issue that we had with this rail the entire time is you can see there's a little bit of damage up here at the front. And that's because this sight was at that front notch. And essentially what happened is we had a couple cans that we ran in one day that we were just back to back, running them hot, blowing them up. This sight decided to walk off and it took a chunk of the rail with it. Sight's off. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the barrel. How is the barrel doing? So we're gonna do two things for the barrel. One, we're gonna take a look inside with the endoscope. And two, we're gonna to go to the range. Let's go ahead and bring out the red block of accuracy. I have never cleaned the bore on this gun, ever. Or for any AR-15 for that matter, to be completely honest. And actually, I don't even own the right brush to clean the bore on an AR. I've never had to do it. So if I do end up cleaning the bore for today's video, then I had to either borrow a brush from somebody or I went and bought one. The majority of the ammunition that you should be shooting out of your AR-15 is a jacketed bullet. And it should be a bonded jacketed bullet. If you've got bullets that are plated, that's how you get lead in your, in your bore. High velocity bullets should not be plated bullets. So they should be bonded bullets. You should be buying decent quality ammunition to the point where you shouldn't have to worry about that and you shouldn't have to clean it. There should be no lead in that barrel. It should be all copper. And that's what I hope to see when I look through the through it with the endo snake. If I have to clean it, I absolutely will. Uh, if it's completely unusable as far as the image is concerned. What we're going to do is we're going to take some chronograph data, and that should scrape out any of the leftover stuff that's kind of congealed from last night. So here we go. And um, speaking of funny things, this actually happens to be a Colt magazine. Here we go. figures on the side of the screen over there uh, all the math that needed to occur uh, because I'm not gonna do it off the top of my head 50 yards we're shooting Fiocchi's 223A just like we did in the chronograph that's usually what we use it's a 55 gram projectile okay let's go ahead and run down there and see what we did point of aim point of impact down here but you can see that the first group that I shot is pretty much right at an inch now I forgot my caliper so we're gonna take this back to the shop and get a hard measurement a little bit over an inch and then I tried to replicate it using a smaller point of aim and basically what I did is the scope that I was using is so fine that I could see the junction in these uh, perforations at that range so I was using that junction as my point of aim and you can see that I got pretty much the same maybe a little bit bigger equals a 2 MOA gun 
after 12,000 rounds. Again, this is not a chrome line barrel. I see a lot of crap on the internet. In fact, there was a post the other day where some dude got on some forum and he basically posted a picture of his Colt that he said he had 174,000 rounds through. And I'm just like, eye roll. Um, talking about chrome lining and all that sort of stuff. Chrome lining is something that, again, just like the chrome on the bolt, chrome lining is something that was came up with as a way to fix a problem that existed at the time. We have since come out with much better coatings. We have since come out with different technology that allows us to achieve the same goals without having to spend the expense on chrome lining a barrel. Chrome line barrels cost more. They just do. And there's really two things that contributed to that. Well, there's actually three. Uh, we'll go with the, we'll add the third one in there and we'll do it first. Uh, marketing. Uh, somebody convinces you that chrome line barrel is better. So that's what they charge you more for. It's like the premium. They have you convinced that that's what you should be paying for. When really field results uh, kind of hit or miss on whether that's something that we actually need to do. Second thing is raw material costs. So we have to manufacture the barrel that costs equipment, costs raw materials. The process is more complicated when you manufacture a chrome line barrel than if you do like a nitrided barrel or something like that. Along with that, number three is the scrap level. So the incidence of failure. You can teach a chimpanzee to nitride a barrel. You take the barrel, it's dimensionally correct. Once you make it, you put it in the chamber, you seal the chamber, you push the button, and you come back when it's done, it runs the program, and the barrels are nitrided. A chrome line barrel is not dimensionally correct when you manufacture it, and the addition of the chrome to the bore increases the profile of the barrel, therefore restricting the bore. That is a very tightly regulated process. Like it has to be done perfectly. And if it's wrong, you will scrap all those barrels. The incidence of failure on manufacture of chrome line barrels is much higher. And therefore that has to go into the final price of the, of the manufacturing cost. And that's passed on to you. That's why chrome line barrels cost more. So this is a QPQ coated barrel. It was not very expensive. I might add, uh, I'm, can't, I can't believe that they can make them for that. And this thing was shooting out of the box. I'd have to go back and look, but I think it was shooting like half a minute out of the box, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, first of all, we weren't shooting match grade ammo or anything like that. This is just off the shelf, uh, Fioki 223A, 55 grain projectiles, not match grade or anything like that. And from our range testing, we see that we're getting basically two minutes of angle after 12,000 rounds. You don't need a chrome line barrel. I don't need a chrome line barrel. And this is a machine gun. Please stop buying into the marketing hype. This is something that they're just selling to you. There's, there are plenty of good products out there. They don't have to be chrome line and they definitely don't have to be made by Colt. Now let's go take a look inside the barrel itself. Actually see what's going on in there. Let's go ahead and backtrack it just ever so slightly. Just take a look. Alrighty, so it looks pretty darn good in there, guys. I cannot say enough about it. Um, going back to that dude that said that he shot 174,000 rounds through his gun, I want to see what his barrel face looks like. Because if I look inside of this thing right here, I can see where the lugs have smashed into the barrel face. And all the finish is gone off of my barrel face where those lugs impact. And uh, I'd be very interested to see he says it's the original barrel and that it still shoots two minutes of angle not believing it whatsoever that is our look at the 12,000 round count on this particular gun uh, you can expect to see some more stuff coming out in the future uh, I don't think that we're going to stop using it anytime soon but I just wanted to kind of stop and do a video real quick because to be honest I had intended to do this video at 10,000 rounds and I kind of let it sit for a month and we ended up running 2,000 more rounds through it. So before I let it get away from me any farther, it was time to do it. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. A look at a gun that is going to have more rounds on it than most people are going to put through their, through their gun. I think that Ballistic Advantage doing an excellent job on their barrels. I, I'm absolutely impressed 
with what they are doing uh, these days. And in general, they're, uh, they are owned by Aero Precision. And I have to say that everything that Aero put into this gun uh, is uh, pretty much top-notch stuff. So I would suggest if you wanted to do a shorty rifle, that you can pretty much copy this right here and know that you can trust it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, smash that like button down below, share it around, tell all your friends about the VSO Gun Channel. And hopefully I did a good enough job on today's video that we'll see you back here for another one in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.